Good morning, folks. Definitely stick around to the end today. Helio Viewer is back. Boy, are we happy. Let's take a look at some beautiful plasma formations on the incoming limb. These billion-ton snakes of charged particles are suspended by solar magnetism, laughing at gravity. But patience, we'll have more Helio Viewer at the end. Let's start with star water in two different ways. Further confirmation of the nature of underground water reserves on Enceladus here. This is just about one of a dozen moons with confirmed oceans beneath. This is linked for you below and contains fantastic tidbits, similar in awesomeness to how Mercury has ice at its poles, and Pluto is 75% water ice, and we've even found water in sunspots. Say what? Yeah, it's all in the Star Water series, which itself began 363 days ago, and is by far our most popular series at the site. But beyond just where you can find water, we discussed the chemistry and the physics of water production in space, the real gem of star water. You'd be amazed at not only where Earth got a ton of water, but how easy it is to understand why. Also, I love when they talk about the non-hydrogen elements of the solar wind. Our Genesis mission discovered nearly all of them. Yes, all of them. Bit of a sad note here, the sea star wasting disease has now affected non-wild groups that are supposed to be protected and somewhat cared for. But since they pump in the same ocean water from the Pacific, what do you imagine is getting in there with them? We'll quickly note another oil spill in Trinidad, evacuations were necessary, and yet another East Coast nuclear plant taking a reactor offline after a problem with the water pumps. Yesterday's quakes. We had a couple in the Indian Ocean that actually match a couple Earth spots perfectly. Both of these are lows, actually. Don't let their spin confuse you. They're on opposite sides of the equator. The Earth spots hypothesis and more can be found under electric Earth and Sun, right below star water. Papua New Guinea took the largest tremor at near 6 range. Mexico had a tremor as well. The tropical storm nearby, Hernan, is drenching the coastlines, but itself is keeping out the sea and is not expected to have landfall. You will remember yesterday we called the 70% formation likelihood in the Atlantic. Eyes open there. And we're watching the development in the western Pacific as well. The bigger storm threat slated to swing north toward Japan rather than the Philippines. That low in the North Atlantic was tossing storms southward for two days and actually flooded parts of southern England. Meanwhile, the Norway side of the north should be getting a nice cool down there while the heat appears to still head north on the Estonia side of that low pressure cell. The storms, drawing off the Mediterranean of course, spread widely across more than 50% of the continent today. Two convergences here. The flow along southern Australia has got to be bitterly cold, while I imagine the line coming to New Zealand from the north is a welcome shift to warmth. Meanwhile. This is what we saw for two days. Cold air shooting southward from Canada while heat went north in the west. It definitively caused an odd temperature delta for July. In fact, there are parts of southern Georgia and even the panhandle of Florida that are at lower temperatures than portions of western Canada. Enough said. As for tonight, the main risk is from that maintained moisture flow north towards Colorado flash flooding and storms would be about par for the course in this area this evening. Let's go to the sunspots. The count is still rising as more creep to the disk. The central regions show abundance of spots. Beta magnetics, nicely separated up north, but I'd give a general gamma class to the south where the positive spots are scattered. When you look to the incoming sunspots, we see much better size marginally better magnetics as well. Straight beta out front. If this grouping closes proximity, it could be beta delta without much morphing needed. And this incoming group appears to be highly complex. A delta spot would not surprise me one bit. However, will the experts be surprised if she goes silent upon facing Earth? The flaring is still fairly low as the sun heads further into a possible extended and grand minimum. The solar wind density in orange is steady. The speed and temperature in yellow and green below are falling and all is calm at Earth. The incoming corona hole should be quite visible in 211 angstroms here. ISWA is showing us that its outward push is somewhat powerful. We'll see if that's maintained when it faces Earth as well. The Mobile Observatory is in northern Indianapolis tonight. Our event is at the Carmel Arts and Design District. Check out observatoryproject.com for details. 
As for suspiciousobservers.org, lots more stuff there and only a couple of days left to get the cheaper memberships. Dozens of hours of content and support for the observers is what's delivered. Thank you very much. Now, some proper shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.